Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you Season 2, Episode 6 of Sink Into Madness, a mod pack by John Bam and M1 Jordan Allen. So tonight, today it's Christmas Eve and I wanted to record today because as per what I read, there are some special effects. As you can see, chests are replaced with some kind of gift looking things. So today, in today's episode, I really want to finish automating the smell tree there. I always do half the job and I forgot the other half because I usually don't use that for my iron and metals and such. But tips and tricks from Duncan Webb, I should put something down to collect a drop. So I want to finish automating that. To finish automating that, I'm going to need two chests or gift box. I'm going to need two hoppers. Hoppers. And I'm going to need... Um, a redstone clock I and mean, I'm going to show you why I need the redstone clock so red oh, derp, redstone torch a uh, red wow redstone clock I'm going to need a redstone clock to finish the automation where's the redstone clock in here wow right here perfect so let's do a redstone clock one redstone torch and then the redstone clock itself like so and that should be good. I'm going to bring all of my gold and all of my iron and all of my copper. And you have to be careful because the reason I don't usually use a smell tree is that there is a chance, unfortunately, that um, it will create alloy. So you don't want to put things into the smell tree that can alloy together. For example, if I put aluminum and gold uh, or aluminum and copper, it's going to give me aluminum brass. If I put gold and silver, it's going to give me electron. So let's put a chest on top here. And this chest is going to be there to feed the material into the smeltery, which is then going to smelt it. And now we have this casting table here, but I have to right click it to put material in it. That's where the redstone clock comes in. If I put a redstone clock on it, it sends a redstone signal just enough to get one iron ingot. So if I grab this iron ingot, redstone clock turns it on and it casts another. Then the last thing we want to do, we actually need to remove the material from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a chest here and then through the magic of a very thin small space, I can right click and put a, cob uh, a hopper connected to this and a hopper connected to that and now it grabs. So as you can see it grabbed this iron ingot. Redstone clock pours the next one, hopper grabs it once it's finished uh, cooling down and it goes into the chest. So now I have automated resource processing for some of the resources, not for everything. The other problem I want to address today is all of these doors that I always have to open and close as you saw in the last episode my life got saved because of these doors like i was able to protect myself let's grab six clay one two three four five six and let's break that into some standard basic clay balls and i'm going to start cooking these clay balls and i probably shouldn't put that charcoal in there and while this is cooking I just want to set up a small thing. I want to set down a road to this mob farm underground. So do I have any, I don't have any more torches. Let's make them out of charcoal, 16, that's, that's good enough. So I'm going to come in here and I want to put a small, um, just a small like balcony so I can go, come out here. Then coming down, I just want to go down to, I don't want to go too far but I want to put a second level and can I go there? Yes, perfect. So I'm just going to make sure that this is fully connected around so that I don't risk dying. I'm going to put this right there and then I can go this way. And the reason I want to do this is that I want to be able to cross over uh, right here. I want to be able to cross over to my mob farm and be able to just draw cables, power, conduit whatever it is that i would need to extract from my from my mob farm because you remember i put a hopper uh, not a hopper in absorption hopper i think at the bottom and i need to be able to get my mob drop from there because 
if I don't get the mob drop from there, like, what's the point of having this mob farm? I need to automate all of that setup. So let me just put some... I'm going to use the magic of F7 because I don't like having to count 1, 2, 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5, and so on. So, right, one more now, one more here, one more here, and one more here. And now I'm just going to slowly break down to see... Okay, so this is the slab. So the slab is fine. This one right here is going to be the one where I have a, what's it called, a uh, punji stick. And that's the one. Oh, I almost used shift. That would have been bad. And that's the one, yes, that has my absorption hopper. So now I have easy access to the bottom of my mob farm. No problem. So when I get conduits or a way of getting material, I can easily access this from here. And I'm going to put some... You know what? I, I don't want to take the risk of having things fall from there. So I'm just going to... Wow, I don't have enough stuff on me. I, I should have been more careful. I'm just going to close this like that. And I'm going to put some fences. Nothing fancy, but just to make sure that if any mob falls in there, that I'll be able to get them and remove them easily. Oh, and I also have to close this. I'm going to use bricks. It's not what I want to use, basically, but for the time being, it's going to have to be enough. So now I'm good, and I have easy access to my mob farm from under, which, like I said, is important because that's how I'm going to be able to get my resources easily. Let's put everything back in here, uh, all of this. This I'm going to keep, all of that. And let's check if my clay's finished cooking. So I got 20 clay. So the beautiful thing about clay is that I can make player sensitive pressure plate. And look at this. Pressure plate here, it opens the door. Put one behind, put one in front, one behind, one in front, one behind, one in front, one behind, one in front, and one behind. And look at this. Now the beauty of this is that if I'm in a bad situation, and mob starts spawning. I can just go like this. I can just run through all of them one by one and get back home and all of the gates closed. So none of the mob can run after me. So that's, that's honestly of all of the research I've done, it's the best setup you can do. I need to go, um, like I'll give you an example now again. So, or I want all of my gold well, I don't have any more gold. Did I get more iron? I thought I got more iron. Hmm. Okay, so this is not ideal because it's not really what I wanted. Let me grab the tin at least. I know that copper and tin don't have any interaction. And then I can... Sh mm, first, I'm going to take down this trees. Let me just take down the tree quickly. So this is something I wasn't expecting to happen. I thought I was just going to be able to continue on true. So let's finish taking down this tree completely, not just partially. Put this right there and okay, let's continue. So I want to go to my Thinker Island. So I just walk through like this, put some copper, oh, put some copper in there and some tin. You know what? Does tin, I just want to make sure that tin is not not rin tin is not something that form any type of alloy so molten pulsating iron no molten tin perfect so molten tin with copper makes bronze so nope i don't want my tin in there because until i still have uh molten copper molt i see i did make some bronze derp so this is not what i wanted to do I didn't want to have any bronze, but I guess I got unlucky and some bronze got created. So I'm going to have to be more careful in the future. Let me just go quickly back to my base and then we can start working on the second part of this episode. I just want to make sure that I'm protected first. So the next step about this is going to be um, I think I want to get into some power because uh, 
Okay. Next episode, I want to make the uh, some more better carbon arm and weapon. Well, weapon and uh, what's it called? Oh my god, I have a blank all of a sudden. I want to make some carbon tools and weapon. Oh, and I completed the skeleton quest because I finally got some silver. I've been having a hard time getting silver versus redstone, so I'm going to take the silver block and open this and put that in there. Let's open the reward bag. Ugh. A Mendeleev's egg. So that that's not so fun, but you know that that's what I get. Whatever. Okay. Next step is I want to get into some power. And if we go to the second line quest, continuing the journey, the first is generating power. There are many ways to generate power. Feel free to explore all the option in JEI. One of the simplest generators to make is a lava generator. It is very powerful in this pack. You can make a Mark II generator later as well as a mark 3 even later extreme reactors has been buffed for later game power gen as well so it wants us to make a lava generator let's look at the recipe for a lava generator uh, like this and i'm going to need a block of redstone i'm going to need a furnace and i should have some gold already so voila so that was very easy and I'll take the left reward bag, which is a one. Okay, so not perfect, but not so bad either. So now I want to fill up that generator. So let's make Lava Island also a power island. We're going to grab two sets of clay, break it down, and then we're going to use bone meal. Do I have bone meal? Nope, but I have some bones, which means two sets of bone, not three. Is going to give me nine and really derp i threw it in the system instead of right click here one two three four five six seven let's make another crucible and the reason i want two crucible is that i want to try and keep the power generation full all the time i'm also going to make do i have some sand i do have some sand so let's cook two sand i might cook more than that later but to begin with that should be enough and what i want to do is make a tender io tank like this fluid tank so i'm going to need some iron bars and then once i get my glass from here here's one glass i'm going to be able to make a fluid tank and the fluid tank is very important i'm going to show you why right now uh oh i shouldn't click those so I put the tank here and I can put the second crucible there. And the reason the Ender IO tank is very important is that you don't need any cable. You can just set it to pull and I'm going to set the front to push because then I can put the lava generator in front and the lava generator is getting lava and is now generating power. And we're getting to night, which means we should be back in our base being careful. So now we have finally power generation. I want to put a second uh, cobblestone generator on top of that, so I'm going to be crafting another one of those for sure, which is why I made the two glass. So I have my two buckets. I need one full of water, and I feel like there's a bird close just by the noise. Oh, yes, and that seemed to be like a really big bird. Azure... Right, oh my god, I don't don't remember seeing any of those. What did it give me? Oh wow, there was a lie. Gave me a tier one mob chunk, eight feather, and a winter gift. These winter gifts are scary. Really, really scary. Um and the reason I made these uh player sensitive pressure plate is I want to use them for my mob farm here. I wanna put it down right here and right there so i can go true and true can i get to the see that's i've been having so many problems trying to get to the absorption opera like that's why i wanted to uh come on oh i got it perfect so i've been wanting to simplify getting to the absorption opera which is why i wanted to get access from under because we're going to have to automate this at some point. Let's close this down. Get rid of these resources. Like so. And let's continue with whatever we were doing. 
So I said I want a second a a second cobblestone generator. Wow, English hard tonight. Might be the twenty fourth. I'm just trying to do as much as I can before it's time to have fun and enjoy with the fa oh. So I didn't plan that very well. I'm going to stop this from pushing and pulling because I'm out of lava and I can't extract lava from there because the lava all became power. Uh, let's just grab my, and I, yeah, that's the bronze I ended up making. This really is sucky. I wish I hadn't wasted anything on bronze. I don't even know exactly what we can do with bronze in this mod pack. Anyway. Whatever's done is done, and this is going to get me a bucket of lava for the next cobblestone generator. And the reason I want another cobblestone generator is just to have the same setup on my second crucible, so that I can make max power, uh, a max lava for my power generator. So I'm going to have to wait for the lava, which means I can't really do that. So the next thing I want to look at is getting some protection. Honestly. Uh, I feel that when I'm in my base, you saw the bird that was coming at me, I can be the target, so I want to make sure that I have a lot more protection than I had before. So it's time to get into open modular turrets. Turrets protect you and your base from mobs. You will need a base to place a turret on. You will also need power and in most case, hammer. A crank will allow you to give the turret power manually. So I want to make four of these. Let's see my redstone. Ugh. My redstone situation is not super good. So let's grab that and let's make a little bit more redstone. And since we haven't made the pulverizer yet, let's put all of this in here and just generate. I'm going to get three craft of... Uh, that's 36. It should be enough. One set. That's 12. Two set. That's 24. Three sets. That's 36. So let's grab those 36 and that should be enough to craft what I wanted to craft. So, open modular turret. I want four base sensor. So one, oh, I'm already out. And you know what? The rubber wood, there's nothing you can do with the rubber wood. So I'm going to use the rubber wood to do this. One, two, three, four. Perfect. And then I want four crank. Where are the crank? Right there. So that's going to be four crank. One, two, three, four. Going to keep that. I'm going to put that back in because that's not really helping. I need to use this to make the base like this. So, one, two, three, four base. Perfect. And now I need to make one potato cannon first because the quest requires a potato cannon. So, I'm going to make one, two of these. I'm going to make six because I know I need them. I'm going to show you later. And then I'm going to make five of these. One, two, three, four, five. Then I can make the potato cannon one potato cannon and that's enough for the quest so one turret base one potato turret cannon and one basic and i'm going to get 64 potato a sound muffler and a reward bag. let's open the reward bag oh my god i'm so tired of getting those i'm not going to use the sound muffler these things make a lot of noise but the reason that i'm not going to use the sound muffler is that I need to hear the mobs. If there's mob around the base and I don't hear them, it's really bad. And I don't want to use the potato cannon because it only works with potatoes. It does 1.5 heart, but it only works with potatoes and we don't have an automated farm yet. There's another turret that exists, which is called the disposable item turret. This one. It makes a little less damage, I think. Where's the damage? One art instead of 1.5, but at least... It, it's really inexpensive. I can put cobblestone. That's why I needed four more of each. So one, two, three, four. Perfect. And I want to set those on the roof. So that's the next step. The next step is I want to make some elevators. So I'm going to need 16, uh, 16 wool. Oh, wow. That, that was really hard to say because I'm going to make two elevators. One, two, like so. And I'm going to remove this. I don't think I'm going to be sieving anytime soon. So let's remove that, put an elevator there, and remove the top one, and put an elevator there. And then I get the ability to teleport up and down very easily. And what I want to do is these four corners are where I'm going to put my cannon. 
So one threat base here, two, three, and four. And I'm going to put the cannon on top of each, like so. And the cranks, I'm going to put the cranks where they're easily accessible, so from the front. So crank here and there, and then you can fully recharge that. And the problem with the recharging is that you can never see how much you need to turn. This will turn infinitely. So every once in a while you have to check, like, this one's full, then I'm going to recharge that one. And you saw the cannon turn left immediately. And the reason it did that is... I finally got where the noise for was coming from. There is an Enderman stuck in my boat. So it's what I'm going to use to test this uh, cannon setup. What I'm going... Oh, <laughs> wasn't expecting to fall true, but okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish fully recharging these cannon. Uh, no, more. And then I'm going to put some cobblestone in each of the cannon. And it should start shooting that Enderman like crazy. So it's going to be very noisy and very good. So a bit more. Perfect. And now I can get back in here. And I can't really reach those from here. But at least I'll be able to recharge them from outside. So let's grab all of this. I'm going to get rid of the sieve. Like I told you guys, I'm not going to need the sieve in the beginning. Then I'm going to... Click on this and put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you can hear them shooting. They're going ham on that uh, on that uh, Enderman, which is really good because I don't want to risk my life trying to kill it. Uh, oh, this one, can I get to it from? No, I can't get to it from under. So I have to go on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then this one, I'm going to put whatever I have available. And I'm going to finish filling this up later. And you know what? I'm going to remove the Weisenberg from here because I want to have free access. And while I'm here, might as well also break this whole tree down. Going to hold shift and let's break this off. Can I get to the other one without falling? Yep. Finally, so that was about time that I removed that because I was afraid it was going to cause me issue. There's also this one down here that I want to get rid of, so might as well, since I'm doing a cleanup, clean it up right now. Remove all of this also. Perfect. So now no more worries of having some mobs hidden under or inside or on top of. Perfect. I'm going to throw all of this in here. And I can finally finish my uh, cobblestone generator. I should have the lava by now. Let's just go back here. Yes, grab the lava, come back. And I'm gonna make the next cobblestone generator like so. Oops, the buckets don't go because they're a single stack item, which is one weird thing that I've always find bizarre about Minecraft where everything's that doesn't stack isn't able to go in a crafting recipe easily so this right there and cobblestone in there and I'm gonna pre-charge it with two just so that it it takes a long time for the cobblestone generator to catch up but now I'm having a better result I'm still going to turn this back on because I don't technically need the lava right now so I want to make sure that this gets as much power as possible and let's go back there one second, see if there's any more root. Five more bronze. I'm still sad I made that bronze. I thought I was very careful about not what to take. And what was the bronze again being made out of? Uh, molten bronze. It's because I had tin and copper at the same time. So that's kind of sad because copper is going to be kind of important. And what can I do with the bronze ingot though? I can make bronze seed, signalum security lock, bronze gear armor weapon tool augment auxiliary sieve increase the chance of secondary output the fluid dock oh i completely forgot about the thermal foundation ducks which is making me think about it. oh and i can make an enhanced energy conduit so you know what that's going to be a good thing i'm pretty sure i'm going to use it for the conduits because i got like 
nine of those, I think, which means a couple of conduits. So I'm going to use that directly, but I'm going to need some binder composite for that. Do I have anything? No. So I'm going to be missing some gravel and some sand. So gravel and sand. And I'm going to be missing clay. Oh, clay is easy. I still have that. So if I put this like that and break this all down, that's going to be 24 clay. I still need to do these though. So here's one thing I'm going to do. I don't know if it's going to work. I want to try it though. So I'm going to put this right here, like so. And then I'm going to use the wand to put another layer and another layer. Then I'm going to break it all down with my hammer and I'm going to hope that my uh, magnet brings everything into my inventory. 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 60. Yes. Oh, that is so perfect. I was wondering where I would be able to do this because I was in a situation where I don't really have space anymore back there to do um, a big amount, but this is perfect. I, I didn't think it was going to be that easy. So let's make some more armor. Oh, I'm going to make two more hammer just so I can break everything down. Let's break this down and put it down again. Perfect, break this down. And now the bigger problem is going to be gravel because gravel wants to fall on the floor. So if I do this like that, and then I use the wand, yeah, all of this is going to fall on the floor, which is kind of annoying, but Let's try this. Uh, what's going on here? I think there's like some stupid ghost block. Wow. Okay, that's going to be really annoying if there's some ghost block that I can't get to. Oh boy. I'm not going to like this. Can I break it with this? No. What if I remove the fence? Well, that's not what I wanted, but at least it's falling. So for cobblestone, it works great. For gravel, not so much. <laughs> I'm going to have to be careful of where I do my gravel. And you know what? I thought my problem would have been on the, uh, on the torches. And my problem's actually... Not on the torch, my problem's coming from the fence. Kind of weirded out by that, but okay. I guess I'll just have to be a bit more careful from now on. So let's get all of that into sand, and that should let me make a lot of binder composites. So let's show everything of this in here and make some binder and composite finally. Oh, a stack and a half. So I'm not gonna have any problem with that a second and a half is good and while i'm waiting for this to happen i might as well harvest that tree so that it's out of the way harvest the tree and look at this isn't this beautiful these two things are shooting it it can't cross over because of my setup oh i kind of forgot that it could climb on this oh well goodbye Technically, it's at the bottom of the sea right now or in the water, so it shouldn't be a problem. It's just I didn't plan it to be able to climb there. Let's put this in here and do I have any jute? Oh, I didn't want to get rid of my, what's it called, of my wooden crook. I just need some juice to be able to fill back up on health and energy. Perfect. So we got power generation we got the tinker small tree let's see what kind of ore we still have some more copper and some more iron and do i have some more gold and some more gold also so we're going to go put that in the small tree immediately to start processing again and that's the problem like that's why i call this semi-automated because as you see i can't put it directly from my base i have to go back there to be able to put it in every time but i can put a big enough quantity that it doesn't really matter so that's done now i want to get a pulverizer so pulverizer is important because of the carbon let's get a 
piston and then we need a machine frame which means I need a block of redstone let's get the machine frame nope I need some more glass do I have sand oh I have plenty of sand I'm going to cook 16 sand into glass why 16 because technically 16 is two full charcoal from here and I have my conduit binder right now just waiting for three glass while I'm waiting for three glass I'm going to use the conduit binder to make the energy so with the energy conduit is redstone and you know what that's not expensive but I can make the better one so let's make the better one to begin with one two oh only two craft but that's that's not a big deal that's that's enough for now do I have my four glasses still waiting on two more the moment these two more are going to be finished I'm going to put back the um, binder because I want more uh, you know what I have my energy conduit I don't really need the more binder conduit for now so let's forget about that I'll put that back later I want to concentrate on the pulverizer for now so this in here I need a redstone reception coil and I need two copper gear one two so now I can make the pulverizer what oh okay gravel first I need to make two flint and oh, I just had enough for the two flint that's amazing so now I'm good and I'm going to be grabbing the coal ore from here 56 which is not bad and then I'm going to go back here and using the power conduit that I made I'm going to put the pulverizer on top here like so and fill it with coal ore and then I'm just going to let it go to town because the beauty of this is that each one of these coal ore is going to transform into three coal so that's a hundred and fifty sixty eight coal and hundred and fifty sixty eight coal should be enough carbon to make my tinker weapon which is my next step so I'm gonna have to let that work it's not going to be instant it's gonna take a while to get processed but it's worth waiting for so that's amazing like that's a really good start so we have semi automation we have the only thing that I'm still annoyed with right now is that I don't really have the ability to grab my resource from my mob farm when I want them I have to go back here and try to click on this absorption hopper if I can get it like so and grab everything I can from here Let's see there's still some resource in there that I haven't caught so I have to do back and forth so I want to have a way of bringing it back and I have a solution for that I did a little bit of research on my other playthrough and basically the solution is thermal foundation something that I unfortunately kind of forget about all the time let's put that in here so now if I look at iron and nickel so nickel I'm going to grab four nickel and I'm going to run back there hopefully there won't be any bird because it's night and I'm kind of taking a risk oh there's no more hmm so I'm gonna remove the beak uh, the faucet just so that it doesn't uh, cast down to some ingot but iron and nickel makes invar which is important so let me grab some more iron from here and basically I want I took five invar which means 10 which means 20 iron ingot let me grab 20 iron ingot it might be a little bit too much but it's one of these things where I prefer having a little bit too much that I'll cast back as iron than not have enough to make my invar and let's put this in here like so and this is melting into nickel and it's just waiting for the iron to hit once the iron hits it starts making some invar which is perfect that's what I want so these seven ingots is going to need 14 iron ingot to transform into invar so I'm gonna wait for this to finish processing and I'll come back to this later in the meantime I'm just going to grab this right here and the redstone clock I did something dumb let's fix that right now I need a lever I took the faucet off but that's all there's always a risk that I f I'll forget to put the faucet back or I lose the faucet and while we're here let's transform that coal into block of coal so we only have five block of coal right now 
these five block of coal will cook into um, carbon. That's how you do it. You take the block of coal and you put them through smelting and you get a raw carbon. And on oh no, bird time, so now I have to be careful. Although I wish they want they would come toward me because I want them to get hit by these turrets. Anyway, I can't take the chance now. There's too many birds that have spawned. So I'm just going to have to take a little bit of time inside here to be careful. So what I want to do is item duct. Item duct. It's in one word, I guess, or it's just the U. I don't know why I can't type the U. It must be like a, a keyword or something. I like to get the transparent item duct, but they need Arden Lumium or Fuse Quartz or like these things that I can't make yet. So I'm going to have to use some opaque one. Oh, I didn't make any lead. Nor tin. Did I really not? Oh, no. I started making tin and that gave me bronze. So I don't think that lead and tin interact together. I'm going to search for it to make sure. Tin, tin, tin. Let's find the molten tin right here. Molten tin interacts with copper to make bronze. But that's it. So... I don't have to be worried about that. I can just go back there, put the tin and lead, and run back, and run back, and run back. Oh, that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. If it wasn't for my guns, I would have been dead. As you saw, the bird caught me, and I don't know what I was thinking. I, I thought I was going to be fine to run around, but if one of my gun hadn't shot the bird and made it drop me I would have been dead I don't know what happened I had a total brain fart and that was that was scary I should never have done that wow so that was a very big derp and fortunately for me I didn't pay for it but I'm going to have to remind myself not to take these chances and that's honestly one of the problem. That's probably what I find to be the biggest problem of recording. When you're recording, you don't want any wasted time. So you're always finding for something to do. But in the beginning, there isn't a lot of thing to do until you have enough processing or enough setup. Which means that the nights are kind of a waiting game. Which I really hate because they're honestly really boring. Uh, I'm taking a chance to go out right now, but... It's not that much of a big chance right now. I'm really close to my turrets. Oh, really close to my turrets, and I'm just harvesting my farm. Because, again, like I said, I need to find things to do, or else this would be boring. So let's look at this. Open modular turret is done. We're going toward the carbon because I want to make this, the shuriken. This, is, this quest is already done. It wasn't to make a shuriken. It was to make a stone spear, but the shuriken is the best weapon. Which brings me to one last thing we can do while we're waiting for day. I need to start making the um, tinker tables and stuff that I need. So first, let's make some blank pattern like so. I'm going to make 12 blank pattern. Then I'm going to make all the tables that I need. So I need a stencil table and then I need the one with the crafting table. I never remember the name. I think it's the part builder. No, that's the tool station. The part builder is just the straight up wood. And the part builder. The problem is that the shuriken isn't made with a tool station. It's made with a upgraded tool station. So I'm going to need to use my iron, unfortunately. But it's worth it. The shuriken is too powerful not to use. So I'm going to need four block of iron like this. And I'm going to need um, three bricks. Uh... Seared bricks, like this. Oh. I only have... Yes, I'm still missing. So I'm going to need some grout. So let's make just a little bit more grout. And I'm missing gravel. Wow, it's one thing after another tonight. So let's just use the trick that we did before. That we'll just go not as deep as we did last time. And, oh no, I remember that gravel, uh, cobblestone wasn't the problem. It really was the uh, uh, gravel into sand that was the problem. So that's it. Let's put that in here. And now I should be able to make the grout. 
I'll make one more craft of grout. That's really all I need for now that I'm going to cook into seared brick. Let's grab that. Wow, now I'm getting more resource, so I have to put that back all in the system. And the binder, you know what? I'm going to put that back in to cook. So now I need six seared brick. Again, another period of waiting. But the point of this is that now that we have a stencil table, I can put the stencil table and you need a knife blade for the, um, for the, wow, I'm searching for my words. I need a knife blade for the shuriken and I'm going to want to make all of the tools. So I'm going to need a pickaxe. I'm going to need a shovel. I'm going to need an ax head. I'm going to need a tool rod. I'm going to need a small binding. That's pretty much all I'm going to need in the beginning. So now let me take that table off and replace it with the, not the stencil, the part builder. And with the part builder, I'm going to use cobblestone to make one of each. So I'm going to make a stone axe head and then I'm going to make 14 shovel head because you know, that's the way to go it seems. Don't shift click. I kind of forgot that. So I need a knife and then I need a pickaxe head and then I need a binding, stone binding, and then I need a tool rod, tool rod. So that, that's it. I can now break this down. Not going to need these for a little while now. So let's put all of this in our system. Part builder, this and the stencil table. Do I have my eight? Oh, six. I have more than six. I have my eight. So let's put that in here and let's more de make the other two that I need like so. And now I can make a higher tier tool station. The iron one, the tool forge it's called. So let's make the tool forge and that one I'm going to put down right here. So now we're good, but I'm going to make some aluminum brass, I think. Molten aluminum brass. Why? Because it's not expensive. So it's one copper for three aluminum. So aluminum, I'm going to take two and copper, I'm going to take it's one for three. Three, one, two, three, four. So one more aluminum. Uh, aluminum. I want to get enough to make all of the casts. I think that should be enough. So let's go back there. Now that it's day, it's safe to go and adventure. And that's what I wanted to do. If you put this on, on the, uh, what's it called? Wow. Another blank. Anyway, if you put this on the redstone clock, you can turn it off and back on. So now we're get, going to be getting our invar and we have nine you know what while we're waiting here might as well start one of these we're going to get enough anyway so that's one block and seven ingot i just have to wait for this to be full let's stop this and now that it's full i still have one block and two ingot uh the percentage on that is so slow that though so let's just restart that in the meantime this is the lead i need this is the tin i need then I'm going to have some weird in between iron. I don't even remember putting the iron in there. And this tin, I'm going to make sure to process as fast as possible because now I'm waiting for my aluminum brass. Um, I'm not going to, no, nope. I'm going to finish the invar first. Perfect. And the reason I put the tin second is that I'm going to be able to just, uh, right click and get rid of the tin super fast by doing blocks because it's five block of tin so i think i'm i'm going to be able to do like three block while the ingots are creating and the reason i made the invar is going to be pretty apparent soon this is taking much longer than i was hoping i completely forgot that the the casting of ingot is very slow so it's a process that's best left to its own design and then go do something else and come back much later. Now it's the tin, so let's make blocks at the same time, which is going to accelerate things. So that's one full block. And I think I should be able to make two full blocks. 
before I get a resource problem. So let me just check. Yeah, three. So let's make another full block. Yeah, now it's going much better. And I should be able to put the aluminum and the copper. You know what? I don't want to take a chance. Until I still have tin in there, I'm not taking any chance. So one block, eight ingot, which means it's no problem to start one more block because the eight ingot won't be instant. So that's just going down really fast because this is still filling, but I'm sure we're going to be good. That's full, perfect. The worry is that this is not getting full and you're out of material to be able to fill it. When it grabs the last ingot, I'm going to switch to lead now. And now that I have lead, I can just do the same trick again. Five block of lead, which means I should be able to do like three block of lead. And now I don't have any worry. I can put the copper and the aluminum in there. Oh, wow. Look at how quickly the lead grows down. So I'm almost done with this. Things are going really well. You better watch out. Better and not cry. let's go back home. Make a sound. He'll That's skin the you alive. Of the setup. Satan claws is Look at this. coming to kill. <laughs> uh, nothing spawning. <laughs> I think that there's enough mob around because don't forget in Minecraft there's a limit to how many mobs can spawn, and maybe it just doesn't have enough space to spawn. Because with these small island, they still have to be within reach of me. And they still have to be able to spawn. And let's back away and bye bye bird. Oh, I feel so safe now. I feel like this will never be a worry again. Although these Christmas event might be a bit easier than I'm used to. It might just be one of these holiday break that I'm getting. Which makes me very lucky. Anyway, I, I was really hoping to uh, finish. Whoa. Hey, hey, just get shot. I was really hoping to finish my pattern, my casting uh, pattern. Just seems like it probably might not be possible because looking at the time, wow, this recording was long. I felt we didn't accomplish anything. We didn't even connect the mob farm. We only got power and a pulverizer and finished the semi-automation of Tinker. And let's be fair, we also got kind of started on these uh, patterns, but it's not as far as I was hoping to get. It just, everything, all nights was like, all nights were a waste of time, unfortunately. So, what I wanted to do now, oh, I forgot to pick up the lead. Can I go there? I feel like I'm taking a stupid chance again. Just want to be able to complete some of the things I'm doing today. And let's go back. Oh, yes. Made it on time. And I should stop taking those chances. Although, it does make the episode I find a bit more interesting. So, the reason I did that is now that I have... Oh, stupid aluminum brass. Derp. I needed to keep you. So this I didn't want to cast. I needed it for my pattern. Anyway. So the reason I did that is that we can now make... Whoa. Item duck. Item duck. Like so. And I'm going to need at least 20. So let's make 30. Because I know that my other place is 20 away. And the problem with the item duck is that you need servo. And I wanted uh, invar. Because... Uh, the... Iron servo don't extract fast enough. Like this is extraction rate every three seconds. This one is every two seconds and it can take a stack of up to 16. So let's make, oh, come on. Do I have, oh, okay. Standard glass applies. Whew, I got worried for a second and then I need a chest. Chest like this. The reason I need a chest is I still don't have an import module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a chest right there, which is easily reachable. And then we can go under, oh, we can go under right here and we can start collect, connecting all of this. I'm going to go with a, 
Nope. Just the whole way around like this. And it also offers protection because, see, I can't fall there. So it's kind of like having a um, fence on this side. But this way I can go back completely to the other side. I should have enough. I did 30 and this should be 20 away. So, yeah, I am getting the whole way across. Perfect. Then I can take this off, that off, and I'm going to also rig this and that. And let's go and put the tube on this. So right here, but I need to still connect the absorption hopper. Oh God, this is harder. Can I hit the absorption hopper? Yes, perfect. So side down is going to be item export perfect uh, and then right like so right here and now I just need to put a servo in here then I need to turn it on ignored so this is on so now it should be emptying perfect so now if I go back on the other side to my chest my chest should be full of all of the goodies that I've been capturing. Which means no more trip to the mob farm. I... Uh, hello? I don't understand what just happened. Maybe they take a while to get there. What the... Um, did I just destroy all of my drops? What the? I have no idea what just happened. Let me go back there and check this quickly. Can I get to my absorption hopper from here? Yeah, it's empty. Let's turn it off and let's go back downstairs. Oh, okay. Whew. So it was just like a delay thing. It didn't have time to get back to where it needed to go. That was a little bit scary though. I thought I had lost all of those resources. But now it's closer to base. So whenever I need my resource, they're just all going to be here and I can easily transfer them into my system like so. At some point I'm going to be able to connect this, but that's really expensive in resource, which I don't have right now. So it's something I'm going to have to do later. Uh, let's just put all of this in here. And let's just quickly go back there and see about my aluminum brass. Unfortunately, it all smelted. Yeah, it all, it, all of it went into here. But that's how you make your pattern. So that's going to be, I think it was only eight, unfortunately. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight which means I'm only going to be able to make eight of these patterns. That is less than ideal. You know what, although the aluminum brass is less, I say that, but now I have more resource. So copper, two copper and aluminum. Yeah, six aluminum. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go and put that back in there. And that's why that's going to be enable me to make all of the pattern that I want. So this and that, and now I can start smelting those. Oh, I need more lava. That's why I went back here. Let's go back here, get my buckets. Oh, okay. Now I'm looking at my list quickly from the corner of my eyes and I was making two more cobblestone generator and two more crucible. I was wondering why really easily because I need lava and now I'm not getting any lava because it's all going into the generator. So this smelter uh, smelter is going to run out of lava, unfortunately. So that's the knife blade. Now let's make the uh, tool binding right here. Then we're going to make the stone pickaxe head. Next one, we're going to make the stone hacks. And still enough aluminum brass. Sorry, I got the hiccups, it seems. 
to make this and then to make the uh, the tool rod and I still have a, two blocks of aluminum brass wow okay so I'm gonna smelt that right now because I'm just going I'm not going to need all that much I'm gonna put back the ingot cast here and for the time being I'm gonna keep those here but I'm finally able to make my carbon tool the moment I get enough coal I'm going to be able to start smelting the coal into carbon and the carbon into the tools that I want. What I have to make sure is to keep emptying this. See, I haven't emptied this, and because of that, it stopped producing the carbon. But that brings me very close to my goal. What if I put this here? That's 12, and 12 means 60. I need 8 uh, carbon ingot, which means 12 carbon raw carbon to be able to make my knife blade so i'm going to have to continue working on this and continue on processing all of the coal that i can i'm going to go fill this with coal and i'm going to call the episode there at this point because i need to start working on the next episode i want to have some episode between christmas and new year's eve and i might not be in so i'm trying to record a couple today we really celebrate on the 25 and the 31st that's when our big celebrations are so guys today we finally connected the mob farm back to our gift right here and oh wow as you can see this is working very well we semi automated the tinker small tree to finally be able to go from raw resource to ingot and we augmented our a lava production to be able to have a lava generation of power and a pulverizer to start transforming all of our coal we're also going to want to automate this but we're going to need to upgrade our thermal foundation and if we look at upgrade kit we're going to need to put a hardened upgrade kit uh no i don't have enough bronze so that's another usage of bronze we're going to have to put an ardent upgrade kit because once we have an up hardened upgrade kit, the next upgrade we want to put, oh, they're not here. So let's look in at thermal foundation. We're going to be able to put a, what's it called? No, not this one. I never remember which one. I think it's the hopper. Nope, that's not the right one. There's one of these. I'm going to find exactly which one. But there's one of these that permits the input slash output of resource uh left and right which right now we can't because it's not upgraded and i'm going to find it to be able to do it next episode hopefully it's not going to be so expensive so increase increase the chance destroy excess gain an additional ingot allow for pyrosis no allow for creation for rechargeable items creation of currency trees to be grown no ender substrate nether substrate mycelium Pyro concentrator, no, fluid, yield from ore, uh, creation of packed ice, extruder, nope. These are for the different type of things. Increase power generation, increase efficiency, allow insertion. So that's the one, transmission coil. So that's the one we want to craft to be able to push in and out of both sides. I think I can craft one now, but I can't craft the upgrade anyway. So I'm going to craft some Arden upgrade kit and some transmission coil ducking, which is going to let me in and out. So I'm going to be able to put a chest on top to put all of the resource I want to break down and a chest on the right to be extract, able to extract the resource. And it's going to make all of my processing this much easier. And I can even run some item duck down to these places. So that's probably something I'm going to do. But that was a long episode. There was a lot to do and it took a long time because of stuff night. But guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.